Funding for Shape Realist is provided by Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. So I was really excited for the new Sony Pictures animation movie is a sentence I never expected to say five years ago. It's honestly kind of incredible how drastically this studio has cleaned up their act as of late. You could say it's solely because of the influence of Phil Lord and Chris Miller, and yeah, that's pretty obviously a huge factor. But the studio has a ton of other talented people working for them, and I think they're well on their way to becoming the most exciting American animation studio working today. I've been looking forward to the Mitchells vs. the Machines for a while now, mainly because I've seen Lord and Miller tweet about his production process for the past few years, and literally everything they have their hands in turns to gold. On top of that, this movie's writers and directors are former Gravity Falls writers, and that's just straight up one of the funniest cartoons ever. The animation was clearly taking cues from Spider-Verse in a number of ways. Oh man, this looked amazing. And yep, it pretty much lived up to the hype. This movie is really freaking great. It has a wholesome and identifiable family conflict at its center, while also being a hilarious robot-killing thrill ride. And let me emphasize the hilarious part again. This is legitimately the funniest film I've seen in ages. I genuinely can't remember the last time a movie made me laugh this hard. And normally, I only really laugh at movies if I'm watching them with an audience at a theater, which obviously wasn't the case here. But it didn't matter. This movie's combination of sharp writing, well-stylized animation, and excellent comedic timing was just moi, pitch perfect. The fucking Furby scene, oh my god, that absolutely slayed me. There honestly wasn't a single character in the movie I dislike either. They were all consistently entertaining. I found it a little distracting that they didn't get a child or someone who remotely sounds like a child to play the son character, but I got used to it after a little bit. The drama between the dad and the daughter is really well done, if a bit predictable. It's pretty easy to tell where they're going with it, but it's still wholesome to see them work through their differences and come together again. And the animation is really stellar. Not only are the characters character designs super unique and expressive, and not only are the backgrounds and sets absolutely gorgeous, but there's so many cool on-screen effects that add a ton of flair to the visuals, similarly to Spider-Verse. I really like these since they not only look great, but they're the exact kind of effects that the main character Katie would add if this were a movie she was making herself. They feel purposeful to the story and characters, much like how the visual effects added to Spider-Verse are meant to simulate a comic book and showcase Miles' abilities. It's neat, and I like it. I'm so happy that Sony is pushing the envelope on what 3D animation can accomplish in terms of the visual styles it can utilize. And again, I never in a million years could have predicted that this would be the studio that pushed the envelope of 3D animation styles. What a society we live in. I do have a couple of issues with this movie. Like I said, the story is pretty predictable, even if it's not bad. I like the villain, but I feel like she could have been more compelling or more funny. As is, she's definitely the least interesting character in the movie. And the climax just kind of goes on a little too long. There's like this nice emotional part where they could have ended it, but then it keeps going and I was just thinking, okay, this is still a fun climax, but maybe we should start wrapping it up. Also, without going into spoilers, I feel like their plan in the climax was just absurdly dangerous when there were a ton of other safer locations they could have gone to in order to beat the villain. They could have fixed this problem with the film with one line of dialogue saying that these other locations were shut down, but as is, it's kind of weird that they went for the deadliest possible option when the stakes are so high. And finally, while I thought some of the integrations of internet and meme culture were pretty funny and well done, other parts kind of stuck out as annoying and out of place. It's nowhere near Ralph breaks the internet levels of bad, but some scenes were a bit, ahem, hashtag cringe, I'm sorry to say. But at the very least, none of the references to real life websites felt product placement-y like that other abortion of a movie. They feel pretty natural since these are parts of our modern culture. Speaking of which, this movie is apparently set in 2020, and I honestly think this movie's universe got the less terrible apocalypse compared to real life. I wish a robot uprising was all we had to deal with. Anywhoozy, while this movie does have some problems, it was nonetheless consistently entertaining, wildly hysterical, and wholesome as heck. It's no Spider-Verse, but like, I genuinely doubt Sony will ever top Spider-Verse, and that's totally fine. If anything, this is an amazing omen for their future. An indication that the lessons they learn from Spider-Verse about how to make a fun, creative, beloved movie are gonna stick. It was everything I wanted it to be, and I would highly recommend hopping on Netflix right now and giving it a watch. Please give this movie your unbridled support. It deserves the world. I'm giving it a big ol' 8 out of 10. An absolute blast of a time.
Okay, now for the sponsor portion. Come on, Shafe, you can do this. It's the easiest transition in the world. Squarespace is where you make websites. This movie is about the internet and websites and technology. You can do this. You can make this transition so clever and smooth. I'm just kidding, I can't do this. Here's an ad for Squarespace. Bye forever! Squarespace. Squarespace is a fantastic, intuitive, online website builder that allows you to create beautiful websites for your business or personal hobby. Present your work using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs. Display projects in customizable galleries and add password-protected pages to share private work with clients. You can even present your videos from YouTube, Vimeo, and Animoto on your Squarespace site. Add an image overlay to your video to improve your website's load speed by waiting to embed video players until playback starts. Every design automatically includes a unique mobile experience that matches the overall style of your website. So your content will look great on every device, every time. And if you don't want that, you can always disable the mobile view from Website Manager. Buying a domain from Squarespace is simple because there are no hidden fees or price hikes. Each domain comes with an ad-free parking page and free WHOIS privacy on eligible domains. Squarespace sells over 200 top-level domains so you can find the perfect name for your website. Choose a URL that ends in .com, .net, .org, or if you're feeling funky, you can get a more specific one like dot art. If you're ready to share your passions or promote your business with the rest of the world, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.